In Creo Parametric, you can perform logical referencing, which uses an XML file from Creo Schematics in order to route your wires and cables. Now, I've shown that in other videos. This is just another example of that. Let me orient you to my assembly. So I've created this assembly over here. It's got a panel. It's got a bunch of controller boxes with some connectors attached to them and a few clips in here. In another video, I created the harness assembly, which consists of some D3899 plugs and some back shells. Plus it has a skeleton with some references. Let's take a quick look at the schematic that I'm going to use for routing. Here we have, it's very simple. We have a main connector over here. That's the F size connector, three C size connectors. I have a predefined cable that uses a data table and an artifact in the catalog explorer. And it's just got four wires. It's got a power wire, ground wire, and a high and low signal wire. And so I took this information and I exported in it in an XML format. And now let's read it into Creo Parametric. All right, so let's go to the harnessing subassembly. I'm going to click on it with the left mouse button and then I can choose to open it. Let's turn the display of the skeleton model back on. The skeleton model has a couple of shrink wrap features, ones that grab the geometry from the box connectors so I could assemble the plugs to them and some other different surfaces and axes for visual references. To jump into cabling mode, we will go to Applications, Cabling, and most of the icons are grayed out. They'll be grayed out until you create your harness part. Let's click on Create Harness in the ribbon. You'll notice that just about everything is grayed out in here. Let me call this my electronics, I don't know, harness. I don't feel like typing a lot. And we have this option here to use default template. I'm not sure what my my default template is, but I do want to make sure that I'm using my start part and the metric one because your harness part has to have the same set of units as your assembly. So this is good. Let's click the OK button over here. Now we have the harness created. There's a little green diamond next to the symbol in the model tree indicating that it is the active work harness. All right, now that we've done that, most of our icons are available here. Let's hit the import button to bring in the XML file. That opens up the menu manager. I will choose Creo Schematics as the source. I'm gonna read in the whole XML file. And for this one, I believe that's the XML file that I generated. Let's click the open button out of here. In the message area, it tells me that it was read in successfully. That's great. Let's hit done return and done to close the menu manager. I'm gonna go to full screen. And next thing that I usually do is create any spools from the XML file. So I can click on the spools command. This will also open up the menu manager. When I click on create, we have a choice in here from logical because again, the spool was defined in the XML file. There's only one, so I will select it and click done return and done. And this pool has been created. If you take a look at the bottom of the model tree, there it is. One thing to note is that the spool is an assembly level feature. It is not a feature in the harness part. If you ever want to get back to it and see what's in it, well, you can go to your spools command and choose edit. There it is selected. Click the OK button and you can see in here that there are four conductors. If you change the radio button from connections to conductors in the electrical parameters dialog box, you can see the name of the spool, the wire gauge, thickness, minimum bend radius, all the other good information that came over from Creo Schematics. Now that we have our spool defined, let me hit done return to get out of there. Let's designate our connectors. So we will click on auto designate. And in the XML data, one of them was looking for a file with this name over here and it found it, it was unique, so it automatically matched that up. But there are three instances of the same connector. We have to specify which corresponds to P2, P3, and P4. I'll start off by designating P2. I'm just gonna make it this one over here. 
And so there it indicates it's a manual match. Sorry for the flashing on the screen. It keeps on highlighting the surface from the skeleton. Let's go to the next one in the list and I'll pick the plug connector for that one. And I've designated two out of three. If I hit the apply button, it'll automatically match up the remaining connector in here as the P4 connector. That is good. Let's click the OK button. And now we are ready to route some wires and cables. And so let's go to the route cables button and we'll use the search tool. And it says, that, okay, there are three different cables that were defined in the XML file. Let me make this a little bit wider so you can see that. It's got the name of the cable and the number of conductors. Be aware that there's some other options in here, like if you had some ribbon cables, you could turn that on. You could check the box for complete wires and cables if you wanted to do some changes or modifications to the routing, but I'm fine with this. Everything looks good. I will just route the first one to begin with. Let me move it over to the selected items list and then click OK. And there you can see it is routing it from this location over there to that one over there. Everything looks good. There are no red marks next to any of these individual fibers. If you select it, you can see the references for the entry ports from the source to the target. Everything looks good here. Be aware that my only choice is simple route because I did not define a network in here of predefined paths. The reason I didn't do that is I already have reference geometry from the clips for routing. So this is good. Let's click the apply button. And now if we take a look in the model tree, there you can see the symbols next to it. There are no breaks in there. Everything is looking fine. If I zoom in over here, you can see the individual conductors and they are automatically getting the correct color because I have colors in my Creo Parametric session that correspond to the colors in the XML data. That's why uh, you get things to automatically match up. All right, let's hit the search tool. Rather than doing one at a time, let's use the control key to select both remaining cables. Let's move them over to the selected items list. Click the OK button. And hey, there you can see the preview of the simple routing of both. We are good here. We don't have any issues with minimum bend radius. So we can click the OK button. And that way we routed all the wires and cables. We can do a quick update and then compare and here I have everything checked inside the compare list and then execute and that way you can see how your XML data from Creo schematics matches up to what you have in the 3d model this column over here is the XML data here we have the Creo parametric data here we see a bunch of yeses for everything is matched lots and lots of yeses that's good that's what I like to see and Everything's good here. So I, I've done all the logical referencing. Now we need to refine the routing of the wires and cables. And so I have a bunch of clips in here and I actually want them to go around this path over here using the different clips. So I'm gonna zoom in on one of the wires over here. Let's change from thick cable to center line display. That way I can grab one of them and then right mouse click and hold and choose insert locations let's zoom out and again i apologize for the flashing of the green uh, i could turn off pre-selection highlighting but i don't feel like doing that all right so i held down the right mouse button to bring up a pop-up menu i'm just going to route along axes in order to use the axes and the clips let me make sure that my datum axis visibility is turned on I can show you the items tab just to show you how you'll start routing stuff in here. And what you'll notice is that even though I selected one fiber, since they're part of a cable, it grabbed all the different wires uh, in that cable. All right, so for a long axis, I'm gonna turn off the flashing by ch changing my selection filter to axis. And so that way that's the only thing I'm capable of picking pick that axis and right now it's going the wrong direction what it's still trying to do is maintain the shortest direction to the connector so i can right mouse click and hold and choose flip locations 
what happens is when you go through an axis, it actually creates two locations on the axis and you can flip the direction if you want it routing in the other way. And so then I can say, hey, let's go through this axis over here. Oh, that looks kind of weird, but it's okay. As I start routing some more, it'll start looking better. Let's pick that axis over there. Hold on, let me undo a couple steps. Let me cancel out. I'm not sure what I, I might have not accidentally hit the axis the last time that I uh, picked there. It's kind of zoomed out. All right, let's insert locations. Let's do along axis. And again, I will pick this axis over here and then flip locations. That's good. Let me zoom in a little bit more and make sure I got the right thing. Let's pick this one over here. Okay, looks like it's just going to do that. Uh, then let's use this axis over there and then this axis over here. Oh, you know what? I needed to flip the location. Hold on, let's back up over here. I'm going to use delete to get rid of some of these. You know, there's an undo button for some reason I didn't use it. All right. So now it's going through here. We're still doing long axis. Let me pick. All right. Let's get this right. Let's pick this axis over here. Let's, there we go. Flip locations, now it looks good. Screw that up a bit, but hey, it happens. All right, let's see, let's now then go through this axis over here, this axis over here, this axis over here. Just a few more axes. Okay, there we got it. Now it looks good, nice and pretty. Let's hit the check mark to complete that. And so it routed all the wires from that cable through there. The reason I did the longest wire first is so that I could take advantage of reroutes. And actually, before I even do that, let's make some changes so that we have our wires coming out nice and straight out of the connectors. Looks like I'm not currently seeing the axes for the connector itself. So I'm going to go to the layers. Let's use the pick icon to select this component. Looks like the axes layer is hidden. Let's hit the show button and then close and zoom in and zoom out real quick. And that way, now, let me repaint to deselect it. I can see the axis through there. And now I can grab one of those fibers, insert location, and then grab that routing axis, and then drag it along here, just to get the wires coming nice and straight out of the connector and the back shell. And hit the check mark, so that's good over there. I can do the same thing over on the other end. Let's select one of the wires coming out over here, insert locations, grab the axis, and then drag along here just so the wires come out nice and straight. I just really like how that looks. So that is good for the routing of that wire. Now let's take the next longest set of wires. And again, I'll just grab one of the four conductors out of there. And this time, instead of insert locations, I'm going to use the reroute command. And so with reroute, now it's highlighting all these different location points. And you can see the location points on either side of the connector. I'm going to choose this as the jump in point for those wires and 
Again, right now it looks pretty bad because it's twisting around the wrong way, but that should be looking better in a moment when I select the one that it should follow instead. Yep, it adjusted it nice and pretty. Let's hit the check mark for that one. And just like before, I can insert locations onto the wire. Let me try this one over here. And then insert locations and grab that same location that I used along the axis for the first connector just so that everything comes out nice and straight out of the connector. All right, one last cable to take care of. Let's select this one over here and then reroute. And looks like it's allowing me to jump in as far back as over there. And then let's jump out over here. And it goes along the path. That's good. Hit the check mark. Very last thing to do, let's add in another location coming out of this connector. Insert locations, grab that one there. Nice and straight out of there. And I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. Just want to check real quick. Did I remember to do that over here? Looks like I didn't do it over here. Let's select one of these wires, insert location, pick on the axis. Drag it out nice and straight, hit the middle mouse button, and let's go to a thick cable display. And everything looks really, really nice in here. I no longer need the skeleton, which is good because that flashing was driving me crazy. I really should have hidden one of these uh, that I didn't really need. But anyhow, let's select the skeleton and then hide it. There you can see the cable. If you want to, you can generate any reports that you want to, but everything is done here for logical referencing. And in the next video, we're gonna flatten this harness and then show you how you can get the connectors to appear in the flattened harness as well. Let's close out of cabling mode. Let's go back to the next assembly. Let's turn off our axis display. And there we have our wires routed in our line replaceable unit. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.